Uh, thanks for staying with us. Uh, the federal government has unveiled a blueprint for universal access to financial services across Nigeria. That's the topic of discussion uh, this morning on our first hot topic. And uh, we're, we're being joined by Comrade Mark Adebayo, National Spokesperson Coalition of United Political Parties. Good morning and welcome to the program, Comrade Adebayo. Good morning, viewers. Happy Workers' Day. Okay. Um, I, I wonder how you're going to celebrate this Workers' Day. Happy Workers' Day, like you've said. I'm hoping that you're going to be very happy today and unwind, right? Uh, well, uh, I have, uh, uh, today is a busy day for me. I'll be addressing uh, a group of youth and students on the importance of the of May Day celebrations on uh, how the younger generation can make Nigeria work in, uh, in their own space in their own sphere and how uh, I believe they should be uh, I've invited to come and speak to issues about the economic challenges, about governance challenges, about security challenges and how Nigerians can navigate the process and uh, make things uh, better for ourselves and uh, why not uh, waiting for, for government because waiting for government is like waiting for God dot. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, some of that knowledge we should be able to share as well because a lot of us are finding it difficult to, to survive. It's not just the youths. What about we who are providing for the youths? We who are the old ones that they uh, are the technically, technically, I thought you are still in the youth uh, demography. I mean, you you, yeah, yeah, I mean, you are still It's part in of politics the... you see people like me being youths. In fact, young youths, <laughs> not just youths, uh, <laughs> but you know, the definition of a youth. I am no longer a youth. In politics, you can be 70 uh, and be, and be you, heading the youth you, wing you, of uh, the political party. You look more like a, like a youth to me than the, the other side of the divide. <laughs> so, uh, okay. <laughs> It, it, the fact is that uh, in Nigeria, everybody needs to know how to navigate the economy, um, the economic realities that we have right now. But it's good that you're going to talk to the people who are more energetic, who are more volatile, who are more versatile as well, who are, uh, are likely to cause a problem if they don't find a solution to the quagmire that we're finding ourselves. Where I, I wish you well. Yes, so, but right now... Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, we're talking about the blueprint for universal access to financial services across Nigeria. The blueprint has been uh, released. I'd like you to comment on that first. Well, um, on paper, on paper, you look at the blueprint and say, oh, this is a wonderful piece of document. But we know that we are terrible with implementation in this country. The government will come up with all these uh, uh, beautiful ideas, things that we believe are are going to be good for the for the country are going to be good for for the people at the end of the day you they, they mess it off in the area of implementation that don't be surprised that the, because they are talking about uh, one trillion one trillion dollar economy and the rest of that to so i mean looking at it if you, if you read the document if you look at the uh, the old setup, you say, Oh, this is a wonderful piece of document. This is something, but in the area of implementation, don't be surprised. They call it universal access, universal access to you know financial services. Yes. But if, don't be surprised if, if they begin to politicize and pick and choose who and who gets access to some of these things. This is Nigeria, this is what can happen. But you know, it, also, you discover that again, the government seems to be putting the cart before the horse. The same thing, the same way they did with uh, the subsidy issue. Instead of them to have prepared for the, all the palliatives and all the cushioning uh, the policies to be uh, on ground before abruptly removing the subsidy, and now we are still suffering for, for, from that one year, one year uh, still going on. The suffering is continuing. Look at the forest scarcity now. Look at the, the whole country is more or less in a disaster. Before you unveil this type of blueprint, there are critical infrastructures that need to be taken care of. In Abuja, here, you um, light has been uh, has moved from epileptic to even non available. So in such uh, I thought everywhere in Abuja in, was in banned. Eh? Pardon? I said I thought Abuja everywhere in Abuja was banned A. Eh? That funny thing called banned A, eh, banned B, and all that. Ah, 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 ban A. Eh. Ban A. Eh. 
some people don't even know whether they are unbanded. Some are on rubber band. band. They, are they are not even on unband any alphabet. They are just on so, rubber band. Some, some are bandless. <laughs> some are even bandless, and they just they bring uh, they continue to, to bring the crazy bills and just of that, mm. you know. So that is just uh, the issue. Now there are critical factors that the government need to take care of. If you release, assuming without considering that uh, there is this universal access to these funds you know, to help businesses, to help individuals and. Uh, a creative industry. Assuming without considering that they, it, will, it will be so. Now, if you don't have constant electricity supply, if you get light only one hour out of 24 hours a day, most, if not all, your profits will go into buying fuel and managing and repairing your generator. You remember in Africa now, they make just of Nigeria yeah. as a generator uh, capital of the world. Because they know that uh, we don't, you know, we don't have light. We don't get light. We don't, uh, you know, critical infrastructure like like energy, like uh, like uh, power, very very important. Critical infrastructures like good roads, very very important to any economy that proposes to grow and expand. You understand? You know, what we don't have in the, in the critical infrastructure in the area of uh, of security, in the critical infrastructure in the area of health, all these things are not available. So if you now say you are releasing funds for people to access. When there are other imponderables, there are other variables in the economy that are friendly to a business environment, it will take away, it will destroy the, the profit and the capital alongside with it. You know, as good as this blueprint is, my issue is in the area of implementation and the fact that they want to put something or nothing, more or less, because there are no critical infrastructures upon which this, uh, you know, financial services go operate and thrive and succeed and expand and make economic sense of whatever investment the government is planning to put into this thing, you know. So, well, additionally, one only hopes that there is not just mere paper promises and nothing will happen at the end of the day. Yeah, because it is possible. This is Nigeria, you know. And uh, this government has become notorious for not uh, fulfilling its uh, promises. Yeah, but um, I thought a, a blueprint is supposed to be a, a, a roadmap for things that are going to be done uh, for to get to a particular end. You know, so this infrastructure that you're talking about may be captured in this blueprint. That okay, uh, first stage we are going to do this, second stage we are going to do this, and then this is the amount that we are going to uh, make available for people to access and all that. What are the provisions of this blueprint? If you have had access to to it, that we need to know. Uh, well, you know, there's a lot of, uh, they, they put a whole gamut of package inside the, so one of it is also even for uh, the, the what they call uh, ICT, uh, knowledge improvement and the rest of that. They are talking about uh, people, uh, about businesses, uh, both uh, maybe large and small scale, medium scale businesses and the rest of that. But principally, fundamentally, is just that uh, the blueprint is about helping businesses and business people. And uh, like I said, if you look at it, it's so commendable on paper. It's co co so commendable. It's so expansive. It uh, it has uh, covered uh, uh, much ground, even to help uh, the ICT savvy generation, you know, to to be able to express themselves, you know, better. You, you will look at it. It's also very uh, I can consider it a youth friendly because it is the youth that are in the area of uh, ICT and the yeah. new. Uh, this uh, the new folk in town, AI, artificial intelligence, you know. It, in fact, because that is the future. That is the future. Artificial intelligence is the way to go. ICT is the main thing. And that is, look at uh, the United Arab Emirates. That, that is what is making them tick now. That is what has made them the, uh, the, 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 the go-to. The, the, the first choice go-to business uh, center all over the world today. And, the, and that is because, not only that, they also, they, 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 they have a blueprint that they are following. I hope I can say, I wish I could say the same thing for my country. There are so many blueprints that have been thrown into the blue seas in this country. People will draft a roadmap and they will abandon the roadmap and then begin. It's, it's like, uh, you know, the typical Lagos uh, Dafo driver going against the traffic and breaking every known traffic rule in the country. That, that is the same thing that comes when we have a roadmap by a government that we also abandon that roadmap by itself. You know, not to talk of, uh, you know, the state government is a continuum. One government will come with a policy, the other one will come and throw it away. Even when the one that even formulated the policy never followed through. 
That is the, my major issue. If you look at the blueprint, the, 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 the much, uh, the little that I've uh, read about it, it's commendable. Of implementation is the issue. The instruments through which it can be operationalized, you know, the critical infrastructure that is required to, for it to, 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 to be what they say it will be, are not so much available in the country. And I believe the government should start from there. The when you when you hear that oh 2030 that it is 2030 they are pushing Nigeria towards a one trillion dollar economy by 2030. Oh, what a wonderful way! What a wonderful news! But uh, I'm not confident about the capacity of the government to implement effectively. That is my challenge about so this. So are you saying because there are two critical things that for me, if I find in that blueprint, I will be a bit comfortable. One is if it has a timeline. Uh, because you can't just randomly say we are going to do this. Uh, uh, was it Gregory Isaac who said, now I know that promise is a comfort to a fool. You're promising me something, but I don't have a timeline that you're going to say, I'm going to, okay, from this time to this time, this is what I'm going to get and all that. Then the second thing for me in a document like that should be the, the instrument of monitoring. Uh, so are these mm -hmm. things not captured in that blueprint? Because it will be worrisome to me if we don't find these two things there. Well, um, you know, the, uh, the so-called ASO Accord, as it is uh, otherwise called, um, I think principally is uh, within the purview of the office of the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, mm. who, who is also the uh, implementing uh, organ of government on this blueprint, and they are also, I assume, will be mon monitoring it. But beyond that, if the government really wants to succeed in this thing, it's been the area of monitoring and the area of implementation, in the area of uh, following up on represent to the letter what they have uh, set out to do. Uh, I think they need to bring in the non-governmental organizations, the civil society organizations, who will be able to dispassionately be able to assess implementation processes and, uh, in fact, and, and even the deliverables. Even the delivery boost, the that is very, very important. Government alone cannot do it. If they are desirous of being successful, if they are determined and serious about making this work for them, they need the intervention of society and collaboration of society to get it done. So, in terms of timeline, the broader the broader timeline that we have now is 2030. That is the broader timeline mm -hmm. that they are pushing the economy to a one trillion dollar economy by 2030. So, uh, that is the broader timeline that we have on that document for now. But as, as in terms of a step-by-step, action-by-action, uh, uh, I mean, what we call the timeline, uh, I believe that should be in the larger document uh, yeah. that uh, is not yet in the public. Uh, yeah, yeah, because they, they, the experience I had with Vision 2020, we, we were hoping that uh, when we uh, get to 2020, uh, uh, things uh, will be so, so good. But we, we, we kind of like we're waiting for 2020 to come. And the small things that could have added to making 2020 a success, we didn't do them. So we got to 2020 and we were overwhelmed by everything. That's why I'm concerned about timelines because the small things matter more than, you know, that broader timeline that you're talking. So now it's vision 2030 and we don't know the, the steps we are going to take to vision 2030, no matter how lofty the, the, the document might be. But uh, in seeing that document, the little that you've read, you said it may not be everything that you've read, but the little that you've read, uh, are you comfortable with everything or there are things that you, you thought could be um, adjusted here and there? Uh, one can hardly find a fault with that document. You can hardly find fault with it. Wow. You, you look at the basic elements and say uh, these are very good, wonderful on paper. Like you said, Vision 2020, uh, we, it's a uh, Vision 2020, 2020. That Nigeria by 2020, Nigeria will be among the 20 most advanced countries in the world. And we are not even among the, 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 the first uh, 100. You know, <laughs> everything that uh, Vision 2020 promised, nothing, nothing has come to pass. Look, sure. uh, there's, there's no light. I have to off the generator so that you and I can have uh, a decent conversation without noise pollution. You know, so uh, I'm using artificial light and uh, what we call the Google to, to, to so that uh, you can see my face. There's no, uh, this is the support. This is supposed to be the seat of government. This is supposed to be the seat of power. This is supposed to be the federal capital territory of the federal republic of Nigeria. But yet, there's no. La, 
for from inception, Abuja has never been lucky to to have uh, you know uh, electricity decent electricity electricity supply. We thought uh, with these schools and everywhere that that they will be improvement. No, oh, that's no improvement. All they're hearing is a band A, band B, band band whatever, bandless and everything. That is that is banning everything from working in the in the area of energy and power. I I, I don't know if you invest in a business person. Uh, under these circumstances, in this type of condition, in this type of atrocious social economic conditions, you are not likely to have re ROI, uh, uh, return on investment. You are not likely to have it. So we don't want a situation whereby government will pour billions of dollars into some businesses and encourage. I know it, it, now this thing did prove. If you look at, at it, you see that uh, it's more or less like government private sector uh, partnership coming together to be able to fund the process. If you if care is not taken, and these you know, funds are, are assessed by certain business people, one can only hope and pray that it will not go down the drain of uh, no electricity, no security, no good roads, and the rest of that. You understand? That is my issue. The promises from the day I was born, 60 years ago, to today, Nigerian government have always put Nigerians on promissory notes. That they are not going to fulfill you know uh let me give you an example when shagari came in the 1980 he said green revolution and uh, he said uh, that the austerity measures and that the nigerians will be the best for him we should tighten our belts we should tighten our shakoto we should tighten our power uh, everything that everything will be better nothing good came out of it people suffered throughout shagari for years i uh, uh, almost four years now Babangida came with a structural adjustment program promising everyone and that, that this and that. You suffer a little now, you enjoy for the rest uh, uh, till eternity. There is, it was fake. It was, it was during the 1989 anti sar protest that I participated at the student union that I got shot on this left foot, or this, uh, on my left, on my left knee here. As you have the bullet, as you have the, this bullet uh, wound to remember for that. It was during the uh, pro June 12 pro democracy struggle of 1993 that I got shot here uh, on this that the bullet this bullet grazed my my, my uh, the, uh, the, the, the back of my hand under uh, a jibo, under jibo bridge by soldiers who are shooting light bullets into 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 people who are protesting peaceful protest for pro, pro, pro democracy huh? people died I, I, I put those these days in my in my book that I wrote on on June on June 12 so um. They will promise one thing and do totally nothing about it or do the direct opposite of it. That is why some of us are not uh, optimistic about the, all the promises of Eldorado or, on uh, subsidy removal. And we are now seeing the effect. We are now seeing the effect in the economy that we say will become one trillion in 2030. There is no fuel, there is no electricity, there is no security, and the roads are terrible. And then, these are the critical infrastructures you should, you should look at. Now, uh, kudos to the, to the current. Uh, FCT uh, yes. CP, uh, Commission of Police, who I, who I believe is now trying to beef up security and make you know, people are being kidnapped right at the center of, of Abuja, including Maitaba, including Asokoro area. All those high I, I bar areas, I think, oh, it should be no good area. People went to Asokoro and, and went and, and removed uh, transformer, a very big transformer, daylight. In this, in this, I'm talking. I'm not talking of last year. I'm talking of about uh, last week or week, week before. They they, like they went and stole a whole transformer. But thank God for the vigilance of the people around and the prompt intervention of the police. A member of the is 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 in the public view. He's a, he's a public pop up. It's not something. It's not speculation. A member of the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company led a group of goons to remove a very big uh, transformer from the place. They like. Throw everybody into, in, into into darkness in this Abuja. If you cannot secure Abuja, how are you going to secure Nigeria? If you cannot you cannot have robust security arrangement for the people, how are you going to secure businesses? These are critical things that need to be put in place to, that need to be perfected before we say uh, we are throwing uh, we, are, we are throwing blueprint around blueprint without uh, you know, like a blue line. Like that, a uh, election manifesto. Really. Election manifestos that they give us and then do the opposite or just jettison it after winning the elections. That's how the blueprint might be. We hope not anyway. Uh, but let me just pick your brain a, bit, a little bit uh, as we are wrapping up uh, about the um, 
the uh, increment in salaries that we are hearing that has been done, 20% uh, to 35% in some uh, uh, salary structures that um, did not have the increment when they did the last time. Uh, what do you feel about this increment? Today is a workers' day, so this announcement is coming timely. So what do you think? <laughs> I By the way, that amounts to like uh, 40 to 47,000 uh, Naira minimum wage instead of the 30,000 Naira. So uh, that's how much we, we got for an increment. Um, I have a slightly different opinion about the issue of salary increment or increases or whatever. Because, uh, let me tell you, uh, I, believe the, I, I believe the labor community should rather uh, be fighting for uh, better conditions uh, for all Nigerians rather than the salary. Because if you give them 100% salary increases, inflation will take it away to 100%. You know? Um, as good as it may seem, because more money in your pocket makes you appear, fine. Uh, but uh, it will just be a, a factory effect, very factory. And let's even see how they start. States are already complaining. They are telling the federal government that they cannot pay any salary. You know, so some states are beginning to complain. Are telling the government, federal government, not to negotiate salary increases on their behalf. That this is supposed to be a federation. The federal government cannot impose salaries on states. You know, that is where we are going to have issues. There will be disparity between federal government workers and the state workers. But all of them are workers. It, so that, that that is just the issue. Uh, salary increase, uh, whatever. Uh, a, a, a small car now, a small car now to fill the tank is about sixty thousand naira. You know, some of uh, some of these uh, jeeps now, you need like ninety thousand naira to fill. That, that, I'm, I'm not talking about black market too. Where uh, we drive, even we are buying at uh, six fifty naira per liter or six oh five naira per liter. You still good to have. You have to fill your, your tank if you if you if you, if you, if you, if you are if you are driving a jeep you are going to fill it with eighty five to ninety thousand naira and somebody gives you forty seven thousand or whatever well, what, what, of what use is that now you look at uh, school fees you look at uh, uh, if you want those increase in the uh, food uh, prices because of this uh, crazy fuel uh, scarcity artificial fuel scarcity by by, by the way. Now, uh, transport fares uh, have increased by over 500 percent. So you give the people something with one hand, you take it away with their hands. That is what is happening. I'm not optimistic about any salary increase. I, I know it's not going to have any for any major positive or sustainable emphasis on sustainable sustainable effect on the lives of the people positively. No, uh, it's just uh, like uh, ordinary palliative or what you just like analgesic. It's just that I just think that you have a dick to, to reduce it, but it has not, not treated the, uh, not treated the ailment. That is the, I'm, I'm not, uh, there's nothing to celebrate about any salary increase, because uh, this economy will make sure that not, it doesn't make any, any sense in your pocket at the end of the day. That is the issue. And uh, the, let me address our leader directly this morning, that issue for once, act on behalf of the people of Nigeria, who elected him into office, and not dance to the orchestra of the World Bank and the uh, IMF. He, he should look at the welfare of his people that he promised, that he pledged under oath to defend and support and to secure the people, to work for the betterment of their lives. The, we, the people of Nigeria, are his primary constituency. Enough of dancing to the tune of IMF and the World Bank. Enough. He should, he, should, he should remember that he's a Nigerian first and foremost, and that we are all Nigerians who elected him, and he must do things to make our lives better. There is no need for, in this country for this crazy fuel scarcity, this artificial fuel scarcity. The government must be up and doing and making sure that if you have a, a minimum of 1,000 liters or 2,000 liters or 5,000 liters of fuel in your filling station and you are not selling, such filling station should be sealed up and it's like taken away forever. The government is doing this all. These business people are also making us suffer unnecessarily, unjustly. What? For what reason? In a country, the, the most blessed country in Africa, 
with our, with our abundant natural resources and we are giving this thing freely by God Almighty and when we are making it all ourselves, we are making ourselves suffer. The government is making us suffer. The people, the business people are increasing our suffering. For what? To what end? Why are we passing through this excruciating for scarcity? No fuel, no electricity, no security, no jobs. Businesses are collapsing and some people are, are, are supposed to be in government. Some people are supposed to be renewing our hope. Mr. President, you can do it, do it for Nigerians. You know, we know that you have the capacity, but mm -hmm. develop the will to govern Nigerians well. It is not about politics. It is not about uh, opposition. It is about our collective interest as a people. Mr. President, you, you promised you ran for this campaign on the new hope agenda. But from the one that you, st you stepped into government, Nigerians are yet to, uh, hope, uh, 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 is yet to be renewed. Mr. President, you can do it. Get the right team around you. Do something to cushion the effect of this suffering. It is too much. It is excruciating. In fact, it is getting to the unbearable level. I'll be speaking to a group of you today about this economy, about governance, and even about how the younger people should find themselves in a way, mobilize themselves to participate in the governance processes to ensure that they take not only their future, but their, their present in their own hands. They must rescue criminality and crimes. They must run away from anything that will injure the image of, of, of the country. But also, they must be creative in making sure that they find creative means to evade the direct heat of these ex excruciating policies. Mr. President, I appeal to your conscience today that Nigerians are suffering. But I know that you have the capacity to do something about it. Mr. President, do something about it. No matter what your advisors are telling you, Nigerian people are suffering the effect of your policies. You may mean well, I have no doubt about that, you may mean well for the, for the country. But sir, Mr. President, sir, as it is now, for the past one year of your administration, Nigerians have not benefited in any good way uh, from your policies. You need to change direction. You need to change direction. You need to give us fuel, give us power, give us security. Let there be job opportunity for people. You can do it. You are, Nigeria has resources to do it. Do it, Mr. President. And may God help you. Amen to that. And that will be a good way to land this uh, now. But um, let me give you one minute uh, to address the workers. Today is Workers' Day, so speak as your final word to the workers, the Nigerian workers. Maybe encouragement, maybe admonition, whatever it is. Uh, just for a minute, please. Uh, fellow workers and fellow comrades in the country, uh, once again, uh, on behalf of the CUPP Coalition of United Political Parties, we wish you a big Workers' Day. What we need to do is that as workers is to ensure that we never lose hope in, in Nigeria. We never lose faith in Nigeria. In, in your own different corners, whatever job you are going to do in the civil service or anywhere you are working, just make sure you are putting your best into the system and making sure that you are making a difference in your, in your flair of influence. Um, as you are fighting for workers, let's also fight for regular nigerians who have no opportunity who have no uh, you know monthly paid jobs let us all of us are nigerians all of us are workers in one way or the other and uh, once again i want to encourage you that let us continue to have faith in this country we will not we will not have faith in our government let us continue to have faith in this country let us continue to do our best in our little sphere of area of work and putting our best for the betterment of this country, for the progress of Nigeria, for the success, for the ultimate success of Nigeria as a country, which I still believe is the greatest, is the, is the, is the greatest country in Africa. And it is going to be the flagship of Africa's liberation, development, and progress. As, as far as all of us continue to make our patriotic commitment to our health, to our safety, to our security, to our progress. Mm. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Comrade uh, Mark Adebayo, for coming on the program. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. We'll be talking. TV Africa, you have continued to be the best in terms of uh, addressing issues that affect Nigerians directly. Thank and you. And keep it up. I know you are going to the top. Amen to that. Thank you so much. We've been talking with Comrade Mark Adebayo, National Spokesperson Coalition of United Political Parties. He was speaking to us from Abuja. Let's take a short break and return uh, for the second hot topic. Stay with us.